Let me show you a resume that never would have been accepted to medical school and how we turned it around quickly to transform him into a competitive applicant. He says he's interested, but there is no evidence to support that. It's almost as if medical schools want to see it, and so he did it. There's no strategic role, and it feels like a checklist. I want you to meet Calvin. When we met, he was an incoming UCLA freshman. I'll show you the two exact pre-med traps that Calvin and tens of thousands of pre-meds every year fall into. And we'll go over the three exact ways we helped him stand out. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I am the co-founder of Pre-Med Catalyst. I graduated from UCLA and trained at UCLA Medical School. And over the last seven years, I've been helping pre-meds just like you get into their dream medical schools. Let's start with Calvin's initial resume. There are two huge missteps here. One, he says he's interested in neuroscience, philosophy, and mathematics, but there is no evidence to support that. To be clear, the interest is never the issue. There are no interests that are better for medical school and there is no right interest. What Calvin is missing is proof, evidence that what he is saying is true. And as you can see, when that evidence is missing, it feels generic, falls flat, and he becomes another one of those pre-meds with a bunch of interests and no demonstrated impact. And two, the extracurriculars that are on his resume are done randomly, haphazardly. It's almost as if medical schools want to see it, and so he did it. There's no strategic role of those extracurriculars in the larger scheme of his application, and it feels like a checklist. Now, to be clear, it's totally okay to support whatever cause just because you want to. Not everything has to be, and not everything should be, done in the name of getting into medical school. But if your true intention for those activities is to get into medical school, know that they will only hurt your application. In fact, if we remove those two extracurricular activities, assuming that Calvin did not do it for medical school, there is literally nothing left on his resume. But there is one piece of his resume that is extremely encouraging. Did you catch it? If you feel stuck building your application, I totally get it. What should my theme be? How do I get these research and shadowing opportunities? These are the exact same questions that we dealt with with Calvin. He's one of our students in our pre-med mentorship program, a partnership between you, your pre-med journey, and our team. We help you take back control of your pre-med journey and provide you with an accountability support system that helps you make the right strategic decisions along your doctor dreams. If you're finding this video helpful, you might enjoy working with us directly. And there's more information about our mentorship program in the link in our description box below. As a high school student, Calvin is already being ambitious, proactive, and intentional with his time. He researched, filmed, ideated, and edited an entire video documenting his experience learning a very difficult soccer skill. And to me, this is a clear sign. This is real evidence that he has the work ethic and determination like many other thousands of pre-meds to become a fantastic doctor. But without the right guidance and the necessary strategic decisions, his productivity will be focused in the wrong direction away from his chances of getting into medical school. And here are the two significant improvements that we made within the past year. Number one, intentionally and proactively built out his application around the two pillars of neuroscience and underserved communities. A year ago, he said he was interested in mathematics, philosophy, and neuroscience. But as we got to know Calvin and walk him through some brainstorming exercises, we realized that he is truly passionate about neuroscience and underserved populations. And pillars outside of neuroscience and underserved communities, we have said no to. Today, he's a neuroscience researcher doing clinical research looking at metastatic brain cancer and has shadowed a neuro-oncologist and a neurophysiologist at John Hopkins. And for the underserved populations, he's volunteering to help wash the feet and fundraise for closed-toed shoes for people who need them most. And that's just what he's accomplished in the past year alone. Pay attention to his plans to proactively build his application for the future. He's collecting data on diabetes prevention and management in these isolated areas. For his ethnography research, he plans to expand these same methods to domestic violence and sexual assault victims within the unhoused populations. For his community health center, he's targeting a research position where he would be the head of outreach for unhoused patients. And that's only within organizations he's already in. 
He also plans to add a mobile clinic experience, helping document social histories for patients and refer them to social services they may be eligible for. He also plans to apply to become a court appointed special advocate or CASA. He'll work one-on-one -on -one with children in the foster care system to help make recommendations to the court about what resources those children need. The second change we made with Calvin is that you'll notice in his descriptions, there are real numbers. He's washed the feet of 24 clients and helped raise 62 pairs of closed-toed shoes. He reflects how patients in Mexico seem to be just so much more present. He comments on their differences in music and culture, and he journals that his organization has a huge transportation issue that he may want to solve. Documenting the real stories of the people he served, that will make him come across as a mature, accomplished pre-med with plenty of lived experiences to describe to medical schools three years down the line in the written application and interview seasons. The writing that he'll have to do three years down the line becomes incrementally easier and easier and easier. It becomes clear that he has a ton to offer medical schools and his application becomes undeniable. What often is a bit more difficult to understand is the other end of the spectrum. I know what will get rejected, but what is strong enough to get into UCSF, UCSD, UCLA? We built an application database forever free to help you answer that exact question. There are eight full AMCAS applications, the GPA, the MCAT, the personal statement, the work and activities, it's all there. These will help you develop a compass and a game sense around building a competitive application. It also features my exact application, the one that got me into UCLA Medical School. And by the way, this doesn't happen after one quarter. This is not something you can start at the beginning of your junior year and hope that everything will be ready in six months if you're trying to apply with no gap year. That's Calvin's journey over the last year. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.